What is going on everybody? My name is Radhi and you're watching my channel, Radhi the Brand. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I do website design and development videos. Today we're going to develop this website using HTML, CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. It's going to be a very slow but detailed process of building the website. So enjoy the process and take regular breaks. If you find this video useful, smash the like button. If you like the channel, consider subscribing for more videos just like this. And now let's jump on the computer and get started. Today we're going to be building this layout here using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We're going to start from mobile and work our way up to tablet and desktop. I've already exported all of the assets that we need for this project, such as the logo, the images and a few icons. Regarding the content, I'm just going to be copying and pasting everything from here and let's get going with creating our project. Create a new folder. I've already made one called Zoo365 Tutorial and in here is where we're going to be creating all of our files and I'm going to open this with Visual Studio Code by doing left shift, right click and open PowerShell window here. Then if I type code dot, this is just going to open the project folder in Visual Studio Code, but feel free to use whatever code editor you wish. And if you want to open your project folder, you just go to file and open folder. That's pretty much it. Now let's create our project structure and then we'll go from there. First of all, let's create a styles folder. So CSS, this is where all of our styles are going to go. We need images folder for short IMG and we need a JavaScript folder for short JS. And last but not least, inside here, we need our index.html file, which is basically going to be our homepage. Now, inside the CSS, we need to create another file called main.scss, as we'll be using SCSS today. And this is going to be compared to a normal CSS file, which I will show you in a second but create a main.scss file in here. Then for the images, I'm actually going to reveal this in the file explorer and I'm going to copy and paste some of the images that I've exported from Adobe XD. As you can see, I've got the logo, the menu, a few images and an icon. Pretty cool. Now that we have the images, let's go to the JS folder and let's create a new file called script, script.js and let's leave it as it is. Now, because we're using SCSS, we need to compile this and there are a couple of ways of doing it. You can, in Visual Studio Code, you can do it with an extension called LiveSAS Compiler. So if you go here to extensions, just search for LiveSAS Compiler and click install. But if you're using another code editor that doesn't have extensions like this, you can actually go to the SAS website and install their tooling and then you can do it through the command line. The only bad thing about the command line is that you just can have an extra command line on your tabs, but it's not a big deal, but obviously it's nice not to have so many windows open, I guess. So that's why I like using this. And the other tool that I'm going to use is the live server. It's created by the same person week day. This is basically going to reload the page for us every time we make a change. It's a hot reload server, a local development server, which is pretty good. I strongly recommend you that you install this. It's a pretty nice tool. There is an alternative for this. If you're not using Visual Studio Code, I think it's called Live Reload or something like that. Uh, it's free. You can download it and it does the same job. Now that we got this out of the way, the first thing that we need to do, let's open the Explorer and let me show you how we can, first of all, watch for any SCSS changes. In Visual Studio Code here at the bottom, we have this watch SCSS. If I click this, watch what happens in here in the CSS folder. This main.scss file is compiled into this main.css file. And we're going to be including this file into our index.html as or browser doesn't really understand what SCSS is. So that's why we need to compile it to a normal CSS file. Now, let me show you how we can start the local development server. If you right click on the index.html here, you will see this open with live server. 
and this should open the browser for me. Here it is, it opened it on my second screen. And as you can see, my website is currently blank. I'm gonna to toggle this to the right side of my screen like so. And let me just make it a little bit smaller because we're starting with mobile. This might be a good way to have a visual representation of what is going on. And for the output here of the SCSS, we can definitely close this and it will pop up every time we make we make a mistake which is a good thing so let me close this it will run in the background which is good and now we should be able to start building our html and css okay let's close scripts.js as we won't need it just yet and let's just focus on the index.html and main.scss i'm going to close the explorer now so we have a little bit more space and I've zoomed in quite a bit, I believe, just so you can see a little bit better, but it's also not too much. Now to quickly create an HTML page, we can use the emit abbreviation tool and all you have to do is start typing HTML. And as you can see, a few options are popping up. And what I'm going to do is just choose HTML5 and we are done. This is a very basic HTML5 and we can start working with it. The first thing that I'm going to do Inside the head, I'm going to change the title to Zoo365, save this, and if the page didn't reload, the first time sometimes you have to reload it manually. So let's refresh, and as you can see, the title has changed. Hopefully, now every time I save this page and the SCSS file, this will reload automatically. So if I save this, you can probably see that it's uh, reloading automatically, which is pretty cool. There are a couple of things that we need to do now. First of all, we need to link our style sheet and also we need to link our script. Let's do that. So to link our style sheet, we can start typing link and then just choose link CSS. And all we need to do, so we have link rel style sheet href equals style.css, but we need to remove this style.css as our file is called main.css. So what I'm going to do is go to the folder CSS slash main dot css and this is the file that we want to bring we're gonna have to do something very similar for the script i'm gonna do script and then source we need to go to js and then script.js and we can also defer this script by doing defer which means that this script is going to load after or html has finished loading and you might sometimes see that script is also put here at the bottom and it's more or less the same thing i guess but i'm gonna do it here at the top the next thing that we might as well do is bring the font that we're gonna be using and that is poppins so i'm gonna go and open the browser go to google fonts and search for the font poppins or whatever you prefer and the the weight i'm gonna be using today will be regular so i'm gonna select this and i will be using the bolt which is 700 i definitely wouldn't select every single one just select the ones that you're going to use and that might just make it a little bit faster i guess in terms of downloading so there are two ways of including the font the first one is with link in our html and the second one is by importing it into the style sheet both work quite well but i believe that this one this method is a little bit better so i'm going to copy this and paste it inside here like so let me just tidy this up a little bit. And also I'm going to copy this font family poppins sans serif and paste it inside the main.css. But I'm just commenting for now just because I'm going to need it a little bit later on. So I'm actually going to close this now as we're done with the font. Now that we have set up a very basic HTML, let's just quickly type something. So let's do h1, hello and save. Now what I'm going to do now is start writing some of the reset styles and as we go along i'll probably be adding more and i'll be adding different components that we can reuse and so on so first of all we need to make sure that all css is working and to do this you can simply just type something like body and then just change the background color to whatever you like so let's go with this blurry wood color as you can see this changed the background color for me which means that the css is working and if I go to the Explorer and click the on main.css, you should see that this has been compiled. Obviously, there is not much different at the moment, but it has been compiled into a normal.main.css file. 
which is pretty cool. Now, before we start writing any reset styles, I want to start with organizing my file. And I quickly want to show you how you could do that potentially if you're working on a bigger project. What you can do is put a comment here at the top and just maybe do CSS table of content like so. And then what you can do is, let me close this by the way, like this, and what you can do is number your content. So for example, 1.0 could be variables and maybe 2.0 could be your resets. And then what I would do is I would actually uh, make a comment. So inside here, we'll be adding shortly, we'll be adding our variables. So what I would do is make a comment and just put 1.0 and then variables like so and close. And now as our SCSS document gets a little bit bigger, we can actually see we have this table of contents here. We actually have this table of contents in here and I can just grab something and just find this straight away. I mean, it makes it just a little bit easy, not a big deal. I probably won't use it. Uh, today just to save time but here it is if you want to use it and i'm definitely going to be commenting some of my sections of course just to make things uh, a little bit easier to understand but now let's start writing some of our variables that that we're going to be reusing throughout the layout now i'm going to be using the normal css variables instead of using the scss variables and the reason for this is because we can actually manipulate them so let me show you what i mean if I start creating a few variables, let's start with root. This is how you create a few variables, by the way. Uh, let's call our first color primary color. And let's give it a color of black. And let's create a secondary color. And let's give it a color of white. So three Fs. Also, we can bring our font. So let's do font family. And then we can do, actually, this is what I wanted to do. Copy this. And we're done. And I don't need this anymore. So we have those three variables in here. But the way you would create a variable inside SCSS would be, for example, if you want to create a primary color variable, you do dollar sign primary color and then you do equals and then the color like so. So let me show you the difference. Oops, it's uh, two dots. Let me save and let me show you the difference. If I open this and inspect it, you will see that inside here, the inside the styles, you will see the root colors. So we can always manipulate them with JavaScript if we wish to. Maybe you want to make a light mode and dark mode. So that would be very easy to manipulate, but you can't really see the SCSS variable because that has been processed and we can't really change anymore. So this is the difference pretty much. I used to use the SCSS variables because they are quite helpful as well. So let me put this on the side and close this and let's see how we can actually use those variables. So now we can potentially start writing some of our reset styles. And to do this, I'm going to grab this command, paste in here, change it to two, and I'm going to put reset like so and save. Now you can actually download reset styles, pre-made reset styles, online and just start using them but i'm just gonna make my own ones we're not gonna cover absolutely everything but i'm just gonna cover a few basic ones and what reset styles are supposed to do is basically give us this consistency throughout all browsers because different browsers used to render things differently and it was kind of annoying so that's why uh, we use reset styles saying this most of the good browsers nowadays use chromium and they will behave fairly similarly, which is a really good thing. But saying this, we still need to reset a couple of things. For example, if we open the page super quickly and inspect them, you will see that the body tag has a random margin of eight, which we definitely don't want. And maybe if we inspect the, the H1, you will see that the H1 has random margins to the top and the bottom as default. So we'll potentially reset them as well because I don't want them to look this way. So let me close this, put it to the side and let's start. 
So what I'm going to start doing now is changing a few things on the HTML and I'll explain as I go along. So font size, I'm going to set to 62.5%. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be using M's and REMs. Now, we used to use pixels. And again, when I use in Adobe XD, I'm working with pixels. What this does for me is I can easily convert pixels into M's or REMs. So let me, let me explain this. If I had to reset the body font size for some reason, I would normally go for font size. And as a default, usually you have it set to 16, I believe. But what I would have to do is put 18 pixels and leave it as it is. Now, what I can do with REMs, because I've done this 62.5%, what I can do, I know that 1.8 REM is actually equals 1.8 pixels. So that's why we're pretty much doing this. It's very easy to convert from pixels to REMs. But you can read this in a little bit more detail online if you wish to. It's a pretty good trick. The next thing that I want to reset on the HTML is the line height. And this is more of a preference, I believe. So I'm going to put this as one. And another thing that I want to reset is the scroll behavior. Scroll behavior will allow us to, if you click on an anchor link to scroll down the website or up, it will scroll smoothly. Now it can be a little bit annoying, but I will have an anchor on this website. So it's going to just make it look a little bit better when we click on it. And now we can actually focus on the body here and reset some of the body styles. As I showed you earlier, we, def we definitely need to reset the margin. So what I'm going to do is margin set to zero. I'm going to set the background color to our primary color here, which we set. And to do this, we can use the var keyword and then dash dash primary color like so. And if we save, you will see that it changes. So the next thing that I want to do is set the color of the text to be white as default. So what I'm going to do is bring the other variable and put it to second color. Just like this, we have white and I definitely want to reset the font family. So let's do that quickly Font family. And this will be equals the font family as we set it up up here. So that should now change if we zoom in a little bit. And if I save, you'll see that this changes to pop-ins, which is pretty cool. And the next thing that I want to change is the font weight, just in case, to be honest. So I'm going to do, let's do 400. I only have 400 and 700, I believe. 400 and 700. And I want to make sure that the font size is set to 1.6 RAM. Usually it is 1.6 pixels as the default, but just in case, I guess I can do that as well. And let me zoom out. And now what I'm thinking is let's start by building a few things. And I'm definitely going to be adding some more reset styles as we'll build some of the elements and we'll just work our way up. So if we go back to the HTML, I'm going to start by adding a skip to content link. And this is basically good for accessibility just because, I mean, when I start making it, you will see what I mean. But uh, just because if you start tabbing on the website, you will probably have to go through the logo, this item, this item, this item, this item, this item. And it will take a lot of tabs to go to the main content. And this is why I'm going to be adding this skip to main content. And this is why I'll be adding this skip to main content. And it's pretty easy to do. So what I'm going to have to do is create a link with the class name with whatever we give it. So let's do skip to content and let's give it an href of maybe main. And I will have to remember to put this uh, down to our main content later on. And of course, we need to close the link. And inside the link, I'm just going to put skip to content like so. And obviously, I don't want this to be visible on the page. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of uh, CSS trickery. So this only appears when people start, when they enter the website and they tap on the keyboard. So let's have a look at how we can do that. I will be jumping in and out of the uh, HTML and CSS for now. That's the way it is. Things will never be the same, but uh, yeah, let's go. So class, skip to content. And for this, we need to position it as absolute. I'm going to do top as 20 pixels, 
let's do padding of six just to make it look a little bit better background color can be black so i'm going to use the variable color of primary color then border i'm going to set to one pixel solid and just some gray color let's also change the color so color of white and i'm going to bring the variable secondary color and then let's do box sizing maybe border box this means that the padding will be added to the width instead of being at uh, let's say 100 pixels plus six on left right top and bottom so this is what box sizing does and just in case i'm gonna give it a z index of two or three maybe ten i mean it, it has to be a big z index just in case i guess but here it is or skip to content button obviously we are zoomed in quite a lot but here is how it looks like we also want to move this button on somewhere outside or window on top of it just because if it's on the left side and if you open it on a really big screen uh, you might end up seeing it so that's why it's safe to start from the top so what i'm going to do is transform and then we're going to do translate x and then just put minus 100 percent percent or something like that and then let's do transition to animate this or transition will be 0 0.3 uh, seconds and this should do the job so as you can see it's now gone and we need to bring it back when we uh, focus on it when we hit tap so to do this because we're using scss we can actually do it inside here we can actually do ampersand and then focus and then we can start writing all styles here and the focus will be basically transform and then we need to do transform translate x and then we just need to bring it back which could be 14 percent and hopefully if we go back to the website and press enter and then press tab you will see it coming up and it's actually y it's not x it's the y axis sorry so that should now work uh, minus and y and then hopefully that should be zero Okay, maybe that needs to be a little bit more okay that should do the job so if i do tab now as you can see it appears and then if i hit enter you will see that it's actually hitting this main anchor which is a good thing so let me let me demonstrate it one more time so i'm going to remove this anchor let me open the window a little bit bigger so i've gone to the website i press enter i do tap on the keyboard it appears and if you hit enter it will go to this anchor which we'll create later on and by the way it would be nice if this was kind of like in the middle so the trick to do that could be that we do it the old school way where we just go left 50 percent and then do we need to and we probably need to like calculate how big the button is so it's kind of in the middle i'm gonna guess it so margin left minus 50 pixels this is a pure guess but uh that's how you do it if you want to center i guess so minus half of the size i mean i do have a ruler here so i could just grab it oh just do and see where it is 134 divided by 2 is 66 i believe so we can definitely remove this and go back so i can do 66 i wasn't too off i wasn't too far off and yeah here we go it's in the middle we can press enter and this will scroll to the bottom okay we are pretty much done with this but there is one more thing that we need to but there is one more thing that i need to mention and this is the print so we definitely don't want this to appear on print so what you can do is outside here we can do at media print and then we can do skip the content and then display none like so and hopefully this will not display on print not too bad let's have a look at the next step so the next step would be to actually recreate this hero section here which has the logo the navigation uh, we have a heading a little bit of a paragraph in here a button and so on 
And one thing that I need to mention is that there is a difference between the desktop version here that we have the menu showing like this and on the mobile and tablet, we have it as a hamburger menu. So we need to take this into a, into consideration and do it properly. So let me show you how we can do that. First of all, let's focus on creating the element. So I'm going to be writing HTML5, of course, and everybody should be. And I'm going to try to make everything as usable and I guess as accessible as possible in a very short amount of time. So let's start by writing a header. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the BEM methodology, which means that we pretty much give every single container a class name. So this one is going to be called header. And the reason for this is that if we decide to actually change this for some reason, we probably won't change this one particularly, but if we decide to change this for some reason and change it to a diff later on for whatever reason, then we still have a class and the styles are applied to this class. And this is why it's kind of like a good idea to do this. So let's go back and put it as header because we want to have HTML5, of course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a container, which means that at some point, uh, when we extend the browser, at some point, we're going to have kind of like a max width because I don't want it to be like full, full screen for everybody because some people have like 4K screens and it would just look ridiculous. Uh, so that's why I'm going to do a container for the content. But the images, actually the images will be full width, I guess. So that's something to test, I guess. But anyways, let's create a div with the class of container. And to do this, there is a shortcut. You can just put dot for class and just do container and press enter. And this will create a div for you. So now that we have this container div, we need to create our logo. And I'm going to wrap the logo into an h1 tag, just like so. Give it a class name of, um, if you use BEM, we should be giving it a class name of header logo. So we might as well do that. Header underscore underscore logo. And then inside here, we're going to bring uh, a little bit of text, which I will show you in a second why. So we could do span and let's do zoo 365 or something like this. Um, uh, we could do zoo 365 for now, and then we can create a link a href and this link we know that is going to be going to the home page i can just do slash and then close this link and inside here we can do an image and then do source image logo dot svg and we can do alt zoo 365 and then we could potentially also add the loading lazy but I don't think that this is super necessarily here. And I think that we might get like a little jump of the logo because of the loading lazy. So I'm going to remove this and maybe introduce this a little bit later on. For the link, we can potentially, we can potentially give it an area, area label of uh, Zoo365 logo or something like this. And let me save this. And as you can see now, we have an H1, which has Zoo365 as text. And here is the logo in slightly different font. Now, the issue is that I don't really want to see this on my page. But at the same time, I don't really want to leave my header without a title, just because the HTML outliner won't like it. As you can see, we have Zoo365. But if I was to remove the text from here, save it and reload there is nothing there is nothing so that's why i was adding this text here um just to say this won't result in errors but for screen readers i assume that it could be quite helpful so that's pretty much the reason let me go back and to solve this problem there is a really cool trick that i took from bootstrap so let's give this pan a class name name of screen reader sr only so what we can do with this class name we go back to the main.css and inside here we can do screen only 
And as I said, I've taken this for Bootstrap. It's a, I think it's a pretty cool way of doing it. But if you, if you know a better way of doing it, let me know. And we just need to basically hide this. So what I'm going to do, if, well, the, the issue is that if you display this with, if we put display none, it's an easy job, but we kind of do want this text to be displayed on screen readers and so on. So that's why we're going to be doing this trick. So the first thing that we want to do is to position this absolute and we want to put the width as one pixel, height as one pixel. Then we want the padding to be zero. You can probably tell what's going on now. The margin needs to be minus one pixel. We need overflow to be hidden. What else? Clip. We need to be wrecked just like my bank account, like so. And then, and then white space needs to be no wrap and border needs to be set to zero, like so. And as you can see, now the text is gone, which is a good thing. Um, what we're noticing here though, is the behavior of the H1 that has a lot of margin to the top and the bottom. And we're gonna solve this issue in a second. I just need to zoom out. This is how it was going to look, by the way, on mobile. It's not that big. Okay, now that we've solved this problem, we also need to add a couple of more things. So we have the H1 and now we need to wrap all menus. What I'm going to do is wrap all of our menus, my mobile menu and the desktop menu in a single div. And let's call this one dot header underscore underscore menu. And then inside here is where we're going to be adding the mobile menu. So we can maybe do a quick comment, mobile, mobile navigation start. We can duplicate this by doing alt shift and down, and this could be end. And then inside here, we can add a button. Now, the reason we are adding a button instead of a div is you probably can guess it that divs are not really clickable and they're bad for usability. You can use divs as, as a containers and whatnot. And I know that you can do all sorts of stuff with JavaScript, but they're not so accessibility friendly. And that's why I would either use a link or a button whenever you can. And now for this button, let's give it a class name or button, which we'll have to style later on. For short, you could call it BTN if you wish. But I'm going to keep a button just so it's easy to understand for now. And also I'm going to give this button an ID of, of mobile menu BTN maybe, and, or you can call it tog toggle, whatever. And we also want to make this as accessible as possible. I keep talking about accessibility today, but we do need to make sure that we do as much as we can. So what we're going to do is introduce a few more um, area labels attributes. So let me bring them up. The first one will be area label, and this will be toggle menu, or you can put it as menu, I guess. And then we need to tell the screen readers whether this, whether all menu is expanded or not. So what I'm going to do is put area expanded and put this as false because uh, when we're on mobile, the menu will be collapsed as default and that's why it's false. And then we need to put area dash controls and then we need to put the ID of our menu, which doesn't exist yet, but I'm going to call it what I'm going to call it mobile menu. Keep it simple. This is it. And for the button inside, I'm just going to go with an image. Uh, I know that I can do this with, I can potentially start with, with CSS. I've done it. I, I usually do it that way, but just to save time, let's just add a very simple image and this will be source equals image menu.svg. Alt, don't forget to give him all tags. So what would be, this would be, I don't know, mobile menu and could potentially give it a loading of lazy, but I don't want it to blink. I mean, it's not too, so, too bad, but I don't want it to blink in here. It's only a small SVG, so I'm going to leave it. And one thing that I just noticed is that I didn't give a width. 
when I said blink, one thing that I didn't I noticed is that I didn't put a width and a height for the logo. And unfortunately, if I go to uh, logo SVG, oh, 43 by 22. Okay. So 43 by 32. I was going to say, unfortunately, we can't really tell how big they are unless the image. When you click on an image, you can kind of tell the size of the image and the megabyte. This is ridiculously big, by the way, but uh, yeah, that, that definitely needs to be optimized. It's too big. Let me close this. And the other one will be image menu. So image menu SVG. This is 16 by 11. So let's do width of 16 and height by 11. And to be completely honest, this just helps sometimes with kind of like uh, telling the browser of uh, how big the image is so we don't get this annoying jump sometimes. I mean, it's one of them things that you might not notice or some, it, does, it doesn't even happen sometimes. Uh, but uh, if you do see that problem, then you just give your images a width and a height. And honestly, this is not going to affect any of your responsive styling at all. I know that. It looks weird and it sounds weird, but it won't affect any of our styling at all. As long as you give your image a width of whatever and a height of auto in your CSS, you should be absolutely fine. And now let me first of all finish the, the desktop menu and I'm going to talk about the this thing here. And in fact, we might as well style it to make it work. So, okay. Let's add the desktop menu super quickly. So I'm going to copy this just to like, so you know, I mean, uh, this would be desktop navigation start. Oops, desktop navigation end. And then inside here is where we're going to be adding the navigation and I'm going to use HTML5. So what we can do is nav class of desktop menu, maybe something like this. And then inside here, we're going to do, we can do the same thing as above actually, potentially. So we can give this, uh, every section would have to have kind of like a, would have to have a heading. Otherwise in the outliner will appear as empty, as I said previously. So untitled nav, I mean, it's not a big deal. And if it's annoying, but let's do it anyway, let's do it. So let's do H1 and then with the class of screen reader dash only. And then we can do main main navigation. And inside here is where we're going to be adding our navigation with an ordered list. So to do this, we're going to do UL and then we're going to have to stack a few lists. The reason we are doing it with uh, an ordered list is because again, this is great for accessibility and you can tap through each element if you're using like a screen reader. So what I'm going to do is inside the list, actually we can put this on one line. Inside the list, we're going to have a link, href. So I'm going to keep this empty uh, with hashtag just so it's not a broken link. In fact, we can definitely give or links a class name. So it's a little bit long, but maybe we can do a class name of desktop menu and then we can do underscore underscore link. This is one of the problems with BEM. The uh, classes become so long. It's a little bit annoying, but at the same time, it's really nice uh, as well because of the specificity that it's creating. So inside here, we can do home. And now we can definitely duplicate this a couple of times by holding out shift and down one two three four i think so home about we need shop we need gallery and we need contact just like so then another thing that you might want to do is maybe add a class of active but i'm not going to be fully making this so for example if you are on the about page you might want to like kind of like highlight this so what i would do is create an active class so at the moment we're on the home page so what i'm going to do is add a class of active and then we'll style it later on so at the moment we don't let me oops. let me tidy this up at the moment we don't actually need the desktop navigation just yet so what i'm going to do is on the nav I'm just going to put hidden 
and then come back to it a little bit later. Now let's actually concentrate on the mobile navigation as this is what we're going to be building first and annoyingly I might have to just put it outside the header. Yeah let's put it outside the header because I wanted to kind of like fly out a little bit. I haven't designed it but I'm just going to design it on the fly and just make it super simple. In fact we're going to do something very similar to this so what I could do is copy all of this. Like, let's copy the whole bit paste in here and let's do mobile navigation start mobile navigation end then we can do mobile instead and just replace every single thing oops by doing i totally forgot the shortcut now oh here it is it's alt shift control and then you use your arrow and then you do mobile okay i'm not gonna do the active or mobile just remove it main navigation i mean it kind of is main navigation as well so i'm gonna leave that on what else do we need we need one more thing in here and we probably need a close button somewhere because all menu is gonna fly out and we need to be able to close it i'm not sure whether to do this with a link or a button let's try it with a button i know it's gonna be weird but I think I'm going to do a little bit. So button and this needs to be tested for usability at some point as well. So what I'm going to do button with the class name of mobile nav close. Something like this, something that is very explanatory. I don't want to make any shortcuts on this. It's just nice to read and you understand what it is straight away. So that's all good. If I save this, we still have the hidden here. So I'm going to remove that. And as you can see, we get the button here, which is tiny, tiny. And we get the links, which are pretty cool. So one thing that I said earlier is this area control that needs to be equals the ID of this mobile menu here. So I'm going to copy this and give it an ID of mobile menu and the reason for this is that we need to be able to know that when we click but this button we need to change this from area expanded to true and we need to tell the browser which area we're expanding and this is how we're kind of linking it with the id here so that's why we have it and we're gonna have to manipulate this with javascript which will be a fairly straightforward process to do so don't worry too much but um we've come a long way in the header so i've Think that we should start styling it one by one so let's go back to styles let's create some comments and i'm just gonna copy and paste header section with a lot of equal signs and now we can start styling our header if you remember we used the header class so i can do this and if you're familiar and with flexbox we can style this super quickly we can literally split this div into two because we technically have two divs inside which is the h1 and this header menu so we can split this section sorry the container section into two and push this one to the left and this one to the right so let me show you how we might be able to do that because everything is wrapped in a container which is a little bit annoying we're gonna have to do dot container and then we're gonna have to do display flex and then we can do justify content and space between and as you can see now our logo is here and our menu is here on the right side if i actually inspect this super quickly uh you will see that it's a little bit broken um but yeah you will see that i mean it, it is a little bit broken at the moment but uh you will see that uh the button is on the right side and the this is on the left side and we're gonna fix whatever is bro broken in a second anyway so what i'm gonna do let's go back open this first of all i want to position the header to be absolute at the top so i want the header to be always at the top of everything so we're going to do position as absolute and then this could be top of zero right of zero left of zero z index of one padding top of something like 20 pixels just to give it a little push and then because we have our logo as an h1 h1s usually have margins as the food so what i can do is the header actually because we've done it with underscore underscore we can even do it this way underscore underscore logo and then we can do 
margin zero because we don't have much more here i'm gonna put it onto a one line so if you go back to the browser you will see that we have no space and um, i think i think that this white thing is actually the button i could have hidden it for a sec uh so where was it the menu let's do hidden so it doesn't get in the way but as you can see we have z365 here and we have the toggle menu on the right side here which is a good thing but i also want to create this container that i was talking about where it keeps everything kind of like in the middle so this is going to be a global class that i can maybe do in fact let's just do it around here i see as a problem and uh, that would be dot container and then we can do max width of one six two one pixels and then i'm going to do margin of zero auto i'm going to do a padding of zero twenty pixels so what that happens is every time we have a container the max width of it is 1621 one pixels. The margin is set to zero on the left and right, which kind of pushes it in the middle. Sorry, the, the margin is set zero on top and bottom. And then on the left and the right side is set to auto, which kind of like pushes the whole container in the middle of the page. And then we just have a little bit of padding of 20 pixels to the left and the right, which kind of like fixes stuff for mobile. Let me show you. We have the container in the middle and if we were to resize this for mobile like so we have this nice little gap between because we don't want our content to be right uh, next to the edge just looks unprofessional now the next thing that i'm noticing is that uh, we need to kind of like align everything in the middle and flex makes this super easy so we can go back to the container and we can do align items of center and this should fix the issue as you can see it's all nicely aligned now one thing that i want to do in here is give this button a little bit of padding just so it's easy to press so i'm gonna have to find what i called it unfortunately so i called it just gave it the class of button okay i'm just gonna use this id of mobile menu btn i'm gonna do a hashtag mobile method button btn and then inside here, let's just give it a padding of 10 pixels all around. So it's just a little bit easier to press. And hopefully, yeah, that made it much bigger. And of course, at some point, we're going to be resetting this button and making it look a little bit more professional. Just before we finish with this, we might as well just hide it on desktop. So what I'm going to do is uh, when we go towards tablet and desktop, obviously I want this to be hidden. Um, to do this, we can just put a media query in here. So I'm going to do at media and then screen and then screen. And, and then we're going to do min width of 600 pixels. And then inside here, we're basically saying when the width goes above 600 pixels, I want you to hide the mobile menu, which is this one here. So I'm going to copy the ID and just say display none, just like so. And we need to do the reverse thing for the for the desktop menu. So we could potentially do this now and style it a little bit better. So for the for the desktop menu, here it is. It's hidden a moment. Let's remove this and. Let me see if it's showing up, first of all. Yep, it's showing up. Let's style this super quickly. I'm not going to do anything uh, super fancy. I'm just going to try to copy the design as much as I can. So we have it as desktop-menu, not a problem. And then we have desktop-menu link for every single link. Easy peasy. So let's do desktop menu. I definitely need to comment this just like so. Maybe like this, I don't know. And then we can start by doing display none because, excuse me, display none because, because originally we are starting from mobile and we don't want the desktop menu to be displayed. But when we hit this threshold of minimum width 600 pixels, we want to switch to that. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to copy this media query here and just swap things around. So in fact, we don't need any of this. And we just need to change display none to display uh, block potentially. We'll see. But because we are under desktop menu, we don't have to specify the name again. So hopefully 
Disha Black. If we go back and let's go down, and as you can see, we get the mobile menu. Let's go up, and as you can see, we get the desktop menu. So let me quickly style this. It shouldn't take too long. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to be um, a little bit lazy on this. And usually you probably want to give your maybe UL class of something. I mean, it would be nice, but let's be super lazy and do it of UL. And then let's reset the UL default to part in zero margin. Oops. Margin zero. Then we can do a list style type of none to remove the bullet points. We can display this as flex because we want every single item to be in one line, just like those equal signs, I guess. And then gap is the gap property, which kind of like gives a gap within every single link on the inside. It doesn't do it on the outside, which is great as well. And now we just need to style some of the links. And to do this, we can do ampersand underscore underscore link. And then let's just give it, give them a little bit of padding of six top and bottom, 10 left and right, uh, just so they're easier to press. And then we can do text decoration of none. I don't want them to be underlined. That's all. We might as well just make all out a little bit better and do a hover effect. So what I'm going to do, I mean, interactions, might as well make the interaction better and do a hover effect. So text decoration underline like so let's tidy this up save save let's go back let me remove this as you can see we have the items in here they're all looking good when we go down it switches and so on pretty cool of course we're gonna have to change the links uh to white and so on but i'm gonna do this as a global global thing so we can definitely do that now if we wish so let's go and uh, maybe around here we can do all links color of the and then secondary color does that look good yeah and there is a lot of um there is a lot more properties that we can do for the link like uh focus hovers um what else there is there is quite a few but i'm just gonna keep it to the minimum here and just change the color for now and as you can see, this is looking fairly nice already. And when we go down and so on, I definitely need to uh, reset the button here. It does look a little bit bad, um, but I've already got in mind how to do this. So, okay, let me style the button a little bit. And to be completely honest, I already know how I want my default styles for the button to be. So once I do this, this is going to help me with uh, the other buttons and in fact we might as well just complete the whole button now so what i'm going to do is somewhere around here i'm going to copy this and put something like component and you can have many reusable components of course but i'm going to keep it super simple we gave our button a class name or button so what i'm going to do is put button and then start styling it so I want it to be, I want every single button to be positioned relative. And the reason for this is that sometimes, sometimes I add uh, icons and they can be positioned absolute inside them, but uh, it's not required. So definitely I want to have it display as in life flex because, oops, in life flex because it makes things easy when I'm aligning stuff. And then I can just do align items to be positioned as center. I can reset the font size to be 1.4 rems, which is equals 1.4 pixels. In this case, font weight, I want to reset to be 400. Line height, I want to reset to 1.5. I want to have text decoration of none. Obviously the buttons, you could create a modifier where you have a button that looks like a link, I guess, with an underline, but um, that's what I want at the moment. So letter spacing i'm going to put one pixel and the reason for this is just i believe that it makes it look a little bit cooler text align is going to be center and then background we need to reset to transparent because i don't want any colors to my button to my uh, default button because usually they have uh, some sort of like a weird color to them like a gray color so i want that removed 
and I want everything to be vertically aligned to the middle and the user select needs to be set to none and the border of the button needs to be one pixel solid transparent which basically resets the border to a transparent one and then I'm just going to give it a little bit of padding of 1.16 rem and I've already calculated this I've messed around with it but of course I usually just spend some time looking at the design and measuring stuff so if I go to my this mobile button we have the class of button there which is a good thing and as you can see the background is now gone and we have the mobile to toggle menu here which is pretty cool it does look a little bit small but uh, we can always resize it if we need to it's looking cool i gave it a height of 16 and 11 that's all good the next bit would be to actually pop out the mobile menu and make it look nice super quickly as i said earlier i haven't actually designed one but i'm gonna do it on the fly now just do something super basic i guess and this is called mobile menu so let's grab that i removed the hidden bit so it pops out so mobile mobile menu and what are we gonna do it maybe around here mobile menu and then we can grab the desktop menu comment paste in here and do mobile menu so mobile menu i can potentially bring this to the right side of the screen when we start for it's okay when we start for mobile but it's not so good when we start for desktop so that's why i keep having to switch but for mobile we can now focus on this here and first of all we do need to hide it at some point so i'm going to come back to this first of all i want to make sure that this looks good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to position this as fixed and then i'm going to do top zero right zero bottom zero and left zero just like so so it takes the full the full height and the width of the available space in here which is good z index we might have to bring this to okay maybe not 100 but something big we don't want anything over this menu and now we can actually focus on the ul inside which is the unordered list and for this i could have given it a class name again but i didn't pure laziness and let's go for padding of zero to reset it a margin of zero list style type is going to be zero then i want the background the background color to be the primary color so the primary color like so then i want to change the position to be absolute and here what i want to do is position it from the top zero right zero bottom bottom zero but I want the left to be around 20, 20, I want to say percent of the view uh, width. So it's going to be 20 from the side of here, from the, so 20, kind of like 20% from the view width. And the reason for this is because I'm going to do it like modern menus where the menu pops out from here. And then the left side is kind of like, or close button. It's a shame that everything else is uh, black underneath. But what I'm going to do is let me quickly change the body color to something else just so we can see a little bit better. Anything, anything to uh, give it a little bit of contrast. And I'll come back to this to change it, obviously. That's how this is going to work. So we've reset the list. List out type needs to be set to none, not zero. And we are good. Then we definitely need to style the link. So what I'm going to do is ampersand underscore underscore link. And then for the link, we're going to display them as block. Uh, so they're clickable all the way around, all the way from the left side to the right side. That's what's going to do. Display block. And then we can give it a little bit of padding. So they're easier to press of 16 pixels and then 14 pixels like so. And definitely could have used rems in here. So that could have been 1.6 rem. And then that could have been would it be 4.0 rem? Yeah, I think so. 
So that's all looking good already. Text decoration, I want to set to none. So we remove the underlines and the text transform. I want to set to uppercase just so it looks a little bit more modern, I guess. And that's not too bad. Now we have one more thing in here and this is the actual button that we have in here. I wonder whether I can give this button here a class of button. Let's have a look. Okay, it disappears, which is a good thing. And now what I'm going to do is style this button to be underneath here. And this will be kind of like our close button and we'll make it work with JavaScript. So what did I call this? Mobile nav close. Okay, sounds good to me. So what I'm going to do in here, mobile nav close, and I'm going to do position as absolute. Top needs to be set to zero. Right needs to be set to zero. Uh, bottom needs to be set to zero. Left did I put zero. And then one cool thing that I want to do is make everything uh, underneath the button kind of blurry. So when we have a image later on with the hero image, it's going to look like blurry and it's going to look super nice. And um, we can definitely do this with CSS by doing a back drop and then filter. And then we can do blur and then we can set the, how much we want to blur it. So as you can see, the logo is now blurred and I know that it doesn't look as good just yet, but trust me on this, it's going to look super cool as when we do. And one more thing that I want to do is I want to set the background color to red just to test this out. And this is looking cool. I wonder what this is here this line. So let me open this full width and just check out this line here. Uh, we have the button. Is this something to do with? Uh, hmm. Okay. Um, I think I need to give this button a width of 100%. Let's have a look whether this fixes it. Oh yeah. It might be that. Yeah. Okay. Now button is good. There is no problems in here. And now we can close this and just get like that. Remove the background, of course. And hopefully, yeah, that works it out. The only reason I went for a button is that I was thinking that for usability purposes, it might be a little bit better, but it might be even worth just having the X button in here. And one more thing that I noticed is that our buttons are far too close to the top. So let's fix this super quickly. And I mean, Let's just give it a padding top of four RAM, whatever. Okay, that would do the job. It's looking good. They can definitely do with a little bit, a little bit of a hover. So on each link, you can do and hover, and then a background color of. I don't want it to be. Obviously, don't want it to be the same color. Just choose something quickly. Okay, that works for me. Super cool. And now we need to hide it because the the fourth position is hidden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to put the visibility of hidden and I mean, we could display none as well, but the animation probably won't work. Okay. Let's do visibility hidden and let's do transform. And then let's just do translate X, which should be left and right this time. So let's do, I don't know, 600. 20 pixels, something like this. So it's completely gone now. Even if I get this, yeah, it's completely gone now, which is a good thing. And now let's do a transition. And the transition will be transform of 0 0.25 seconds. Okay, this is all good. And now what I want to achieve is when we press this, the menu to pop out and to do this, I am going to create an extra class called is active. So mobile menu, we can definitely just add it here, I guess. Uh, we can do and dot is active. And then we can do visibility visible. Yeah, we need transform. Let's fire. In fact, let's just copy this transform and that needs to be set to zero now to just like reset it. We don't have to specify pixels anymore, I don't think. And also do we need 
transform again, I dab. Okay, now let's test it out. So if I add this class to the mobile menu here, class is active, we get this. And I'm not sure whether the animation works. One way to test it out would be to uh, do this. And then where is it? So it's active. If I remove it now, hopefully we'll see it slide out. Yep, it's lit. Yep, that worked. And then if I add it, it slides in. So that's pretty cool. Let me reset the background color festival and then we'll concentrate on the rest. Oh, the background color was to the body. So I don't forget. Where is it? not so bad the original state of this is obviously hidden so here it is we have all menu when we go up everything is working as well and so on so we're gonna have to write a little bit of javascript to make this work but to be completely honest it should be fairly straightforward so let's jump back to the code editor and i'm gonna open the explorer and i'm going to open js and script.js by double clicking on it Let's minimize everything else that we don't need. And let's start writing our script. There are a few things that we need to know now. So in, in our index, in our index.html, we need to know the class name of this or the ID. So I could potentially use this mobile menu class, or you can use the ID as well. I can show you, actually, I can show you a bit of both. So this is mobile menu that needs to show and hide. Then we need the button itself, which is the mobile menu button. And that's fairly, that's self-explanatory. It's an ID of mobile menu button. And we also need the close button, which was, oh, it's here. So that has a class. Let's just use the class of mobile nav close. All right, that's fairly self-explanatory as well. So we have classes and, okay. So this is just going to be commented, by the way, just for me to know what I'm doing. First of all, we need to be able to select this button so we can bind a, an event listener to it. Every time we click on it, we want something to happen. To do this, we can do a const, we can give it a name of mobile menu BTN just to say consistent. And this will be equals to the element on the page. To get the element on the page, we need to do document dot get sorry query selector and then we inside here we can actually pass an id or a class name but in this case we have an id so i'm gonna do an id of mobile menu btn close this we need to copy this line and do the same thing for this here so this would be a mobile menu maybe and then we can use the class name of mobile menu. I could have kept it consistent, but it doesn't matter. And by the way, this is a class name. Don't get this wrong. It is a class name. And then the last thing that we need to do is the close button, which we can duplicate another line. And let's just do mobile menu close close PTN. Yeah, that would do. And then we need to copy the class name pasted inside here and we should be good to go all right now let's bind an event listener to our mobile button and see whether this works to do this we simply grab the name and then we do add event listener and then inside here we can do a click event listener so every time we click we want something to happen so we do a function and then open close and then inside this function we can do, actually, this could be a narrow function as well. Uh, I don't think that it's going to make any difference. To be completely honest, we can just do this and do as a narrow function. And now inside here, first of all, we need to make sure that we set the, the is active class here to this, to this mobile menu. So it pops up. And to do this mobile menu, so we can do, we can grab the mobile menu selector and then we can do class list dot add, which means we're adding a class to it. And then the class that we want to add is active, just like so. 
And if we save this and go to the browser and we press on the button here, you will see that the menu is flying. I know it's black on black at the moment, but the menu is flying and it's working. You can also test stuff with console log and put some and put some emojis, of course. And every time we go in the browser and press the button, we'll get that emoji as well, which is pretty cool. And now that we have this, another thing that we need to do is every time the button goes to active, we also want to change this area expanded to be true. I'm going to actually grab this name. And what I'm going to do is on the mobile menu button, I'm going to do dot set attribute and the attribute that I want to set is area expanded and we just want to change it to true I believe so that's all good and if we open the browser super quickly go to mobile view go to elements and look for the button here first of all and look at the area expanded which is right here okay whoops Area expanded is currently equals to false. So now if we click, it should hopefully go to true. As you can see, area expanded true, which is a good thing. And now we need to just do reverse, but we need to do the reverse thing when we click this invisible button here. It will be visible when we add content. So the invisible button was called mobile close menu. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing as here, but just literally reverse it. So every time we press the mobile menu close button here yeah, we added we add an event listener to it and then on the mobile menu class list we this time we remove the class of is active and we also set the attribute of area expanded to be false it's like so hopefully if we go back we should have a fully working menu and everything is looking good okay pretty happy with this i think that we're pretty much done with the menu now and we can focus on the hero image okay we don't need the javascript anymore so we can close this and we can scroll down to the bottom and continue with our mission now everything else that i'm going to be building from now on is going to be inside or a main tag just to be a little bit more just HTML semantics, I guess, but it doesn't have to be uh, in there. So anyways, let's uh, let's start by building our first section. So I'm going to do section and then give this section a class name of hero, just in case we, some, we want to change this to something else like a div. And now there are a couple of ways that we can do this. Let me just quickly look at the design. Now there are a couple of ways that we can do this. We can either add this image as a background image and that would be probably the easiest solution but i'm not sure if it's the best one uh, i think the best one would be to add it as potentially as an image and you can do you can uh, have it as lazy loaded and so on especially i mean especially the other ones they they can definitely be images instead of background images and have them as loaded lazy just so if they don't show on the screen, they don't load, which means that your website will be faster. And also, we can definitely put different uh, versions of this image, smaller ones, bigger ones. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to add one image instead of a background image and do it this way. And also, and let's do this section as a background image instead. So we're going to do this one with an image and the other one with a background. So we have a bit of both. And as you can see, we have a title, description, button, overlay, and an image. Let's build this super, super quickly. Here is section. So first of all, we need a wrapper for the image. So I'm going to do hero underscore underscore image, like so. And inside here, I'm going to just add an image. And this could be of source image hero dot JPEG. Alt, we can just give it something like lifting heavy i don't know obviously be a bit more descriptive of what's on the image and then if you wish to loading lazy we can do but i'm afraid that it could potentially 
make a big jump we'll, we'll have a look if it jumps too much with the loading lazy i probably won't add it and one thing that we need to check out is the size of this image so this is the hero image and the hero image is 920 by 1074 width 920 by height 1074 excuse me and that should be good we obviously make this responsive don't worry it's all good what else do we need i hope that i'm not missing anything but that should be it i guess and then and then what we can do is create a container for everything else so i'm gonna do dot container and then this will be our hero container so i'm gonna give it a specific class of hero container just so it's easy to start for us and inside this hero container i'm gonna have a hero wrapper which will kind of push everything in the middle of the screen so let's do that so this will be hero dash wrapper and then inside the wrapper we're gonna have a couple of things we're gonna have or h1 heading so this will be class uh, hero hero wrapper heading maybe like so and then i can put like this here your here make this here your here and then we can do a paragraph and the paragraph will have a class of hero wrapper and then what is it maybe body text something like this and then I'm going to copy and paste some of the text like so. And then last but not least, we need a button. Now this button is going to be a link, href. I'm going to leave it blank with the class of button. And then button, button primary, because this is something that I want to do. I want to create different types of buttons that uh, we can reuse throughout the layout. And maybe we can give it an area uh, label find out more and then we can close it and fill this with find out more like this that should be it i think another thing that we do have on the layout is this scroll button which we're gonna have to do as well and to do this i'm gonna do it outside the hero wrapper div because that's probably gonna be positioned absolute so let's do a href and this will be equals scroll down scroll down will do and then we need to give this a class name of something like hero underscore underscore scroll btn will do and then inside here we can do scroll and then we need to add the image image source and then image then arrow down and then give it an old mm, scroll down okay so if the image doesn't work we can just do scroll down and my keyboard is not working anymore i think it's just too old now um i need to smash it harder okay so so we got scroll down and i need to get the size of this svg arrow down so 24 by 15 like so could have this as loading lazy yeah i think that'll do um let me think let me see if we're missing anything so we have the section and i think that's pretty much it i can do right click format and that's looking good now i just need to remember the classes hero image container uh we can definitely start this so let me have a look at how oh this is this is kind of working okay yeah it obviously doesn't work very well uh but yeah the text is underneath the image is here so what we can do is potentially i might be able to push this to the side nice okay we can do this and we can work on it let's create a new section and let's call it hero section hero section like so and then let's start hero is our main class that wraps everything and what i want to achieve here is i want this hero section to be always 100 percent of view height so let's do height 100 view height and then let's do position of relative dis display flex 
then we can do align items of center justify content of center i just want to center pretty much everything flex direction needs to be column so everything is kind of like these are stacking underneath each other and then they were already i guess and then text align center okay this is already looking kind of nice to be completely honest with you but uh, we can do a lot more one thing that i want to achieve straight away is that this image needs to be kind of like below the text obviously and to do this i am thinking that we can just do ampersand underscore underscore image and then we can just position this as absolute okay position absolute and then we can do top zero right zero um, bottom zero and left set to zero not too bad i like it then we can definitely position this image as object inside the image container here where is it image container and the reason for this is so we can kind of like tell it to contain kind of like sorry cover the cover a little bit more so it kind of squishes the image and we can see a lot more of it instead of just seeing the left side of the image uh, it's very easy to manipulate with background images but uh, it won't be too bad actually so what we can do is i can just select the inside image and just say object fit and then cover and then i can do width of 100 and height of 100 i think that's fairly important to do and save and as you can see this is already looking pretty cool now the actual container on top which is this one here that contains all of the text i guess the content needs to go up i know i know it's hard to see but uh, it does need to go up so we can do ampersand container and then we can do z index one display flex justify content center okay that's not too bad at all the scroll definitely needs fixing so what we can do with the scroll is do ampersand underscore underscore scroll btn is this what i, I wonder if this is what i called it scroll btn yep that's what i called it so scroll btn position i want to position this absolute to the whole section and just have it here at the bottom and let's do z index one and then display needs to be a flex just because i want these two to be stacking and each other i know they are at the moment but uh just in case flex and flex direction column like so then we need to align items to the center font size i want to change to 1.4 rem which is 1.4 pixels then text decoration i want to change to none i don't want this ugly link is this even working hero container i don't think it's working hero scroll bdn okay i've misspelled it scroll bdn i've misspelled it here okay now it's working absolute setting is flex okay not bad that needs to just go to bottom of this could be dangerous using percentages but that works and because we have an image inside it i'm just gonna go image or svg we might as well select both just in case we put an svg later on uh, i mean it's already an svg anyway but uh better save than sorry i guess with 24 pixels and then this could be margin top of one gram it does not look good to me what is wrong with it so we have the link oh did i justify it to oh uh, no way okay i've put i've put margin left on the image and i was wondering why isn't it's margin top okay okay yeah, i was wondering why this wasn't working and we just margin left anyways that's actually looking pretty cool it's linked we do need to link it to the next section but that's absolutely fine we can do this 
And um, as you can see, we have a little bit of a problem here. The text is far too light. And what I have in the design is this extra layer. It's kind of like a gradient. So the two ways of doing this, we can simply just do this with CSS. Or if you're really lazy, I guess, or if you do more complicated stuff, you could try to do an SVG. Let's do it with a pseudo element after, and then we can add it as a linear gradient. So what I'm going to do is here, we can do ampersand dot dot after. I think the correct way of doing after is with two dots, but uh, one dot, sorry, one semicolon is still, is still uh, accurate as well. I mean, still, the browser will still render it. It's not a problem. But uh, anyways, a nice thing to know, I guess, or not. Okay, content is something that we need to add in order to make this as an actual kind of like, a, I call them kind of like a ghost diffs that they, they don't exist in the DOM, but we can kind of create them by doing this after and then content. And we just leave it empty. And then we need to set this as an absolute. So it goes from top, left, uh, right and bottom. So let's do that. Position, position absolute, top zero, right zero, bottom zero, left zero. What else do we need? And the background color. Actually, do we need background of black first of all? Just kind of like a, oh, that's white. Uh, one, two, three. Just kind of like a, as a, as a backup, maybe let's let's have a look. Probably not, I would say. And then we'll do background linear gradient, and the gradient that I want will be RGB, RGB alpha, and then we have black is going to be zero point zero point zero, and then we just put the opacity of zero point twenty three, something like this, then. We do need to start with 0%. And then the next one will be RGBA. And then we go for another black color, like so. Oops, it's commas instead. And then the alpha for this one will be 0 0.85. And then we have this one up to 72%. And then the rest can be black, like so. 200, 100%. Uh, that does look okay. okay. I've got an error. So we have RGBA, one, two, three. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that won't work then. So I'm going to have to remove the background. Okay, I'm making a mistake somewhere, which is a little bit hard to see at the moment. So we have RGBA. One, two, three, four percentage. RGBA. Oh, damn it. RGB. RGBA. Oh, here we go. Made a spelling mistake. And as you can see, we have the really nice uh, effect here, which is pretty cool. And we are almost, almost done with the hero section. Now, first of all, let's have a look at the title. And what I'm going to do for the title is instead of making a very specific title for this to start with, I'm going to do a global one for all of the H1 tags. And then I'm going to kind of like overwrite just the hero one to make it a little bit more to like to make it stand out from the rest. Let's call it that way. So, so let me show you how we can do that above everything here. Maybe, I don't know, maybe around here. Let's add or H1. And of course you're going to have to do this for H1. If it's h2 h3 h4 h5 and h6 if you wish but i'm gonna keep it simple for now and there are a couple of ways of doing responsive fonts we can definitely do it with a media query in fact let me just copy one of them and then i'm gonna show you so one way of doing it is we could potentially just do I don't know. I'm just going to give you a very bad example here, but we could do font size of 4.2 rem is or h1 for mobile. And when we hit this threshold of 600 pixels, maybe we want to change it to I don't know, 
something ridiculous. Seven, seven would do. Okay, look at what happens now. We go up, it goes, the font is quite big. And if you go down, it goes massive. So this is how you could potentially do responsive web fonts and you can do multiple media queries. But I'm going to kind of cheat today and do something different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clamp uh, property. So I'm going to do is font size and I'm going to clamp everything. And I'm going to explain what this means. So the first value is the minimum of what we want our font. The middle value is what we ideally want the font to be. And then the last value is kind of like the max value. So these are the values that I want. If I was to save this, look at what happens when I, so when I toggle the responsive mode. And let me just make some space. So let me just, yeah. Can you see what happens? So this is the minimum. It won't go any anything lower than this. But when I go up, look at this now. It kind of starts to extend and then it goes to the maximum threshold which I've put on. So it's kind of like a really nice uh, responsive font, I guess. So that's how I'm going to do it today. And let me have a look at what else we have to do. So we definitely need to make this effect here with the outlines. Yeah. And then the second text can be kind of like a field. So to do this, let's use some more trickery. And I'm going to use the WebKit text fill color for this to make it work. So let's do dash WebKit. And by the way, if this doesn't work on a very old browser for some reason, I guess the worst that can happen is that is the font is just going to go to white. I have to test that. But anyways, WebKit text fill, then color, and then we set the color that we want. I'm going to go with RGBA. And then 255, 255, 255, and then zero. All right, which is basically white, but then with the alpha of zero, so it's transparent. And then I can do WebKit text stroke, and that could be one pixel. And then we can just pull in our var, var variable of our second color. It, and then color we need to remove, actually. This is what I'm worried now. But who cares about old browsers, I guess. Um, <laughs> none. I guess we can do if it's supported and then this will work. All right, this will work. So color none, margin top needs to be zero. And then margin bottom needs to be for rem. And then line height is what I want to change to 1.0. So we reset the margins, which is pretty cool. The height is reset. And the last thing that I want to do is make the white text. So, so basically the highlighted text in the design. Let's do that. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to wrap the text with a span. So I'm just going to do span. And then inside here, I'm going to do dash dash, sorry, web, webkit dash text dash fill dash color RGBA. What else? 255. Two five five two five five one. I like it. Let's see how this will look like. So if I find the H1, which is this one here, and if we wrap maybe make this ear, your ear. So if you find your ear and do span and wrap it like this, and actually I need dot there instead. Okay, let's save this and have a look. As you can see, this is working just the way I wanted it. Yes, the text could do uh, with the alignment that we have on the original design, but we'll get this. This is kind of like, think of this as my global H1 tag. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm going to do the same thing with the paragraph, you know? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so if we go back and I'm going to do another tag in here, paragraph. And then for the paragraph, let's do exactly the same thing here, yeah, font clamp. And I'm going to do. 1.6 rem to 1.6 view width to 2 rem and then inside here let's do let's reset the margin so margin top of zero margin bottom of zero and line height needs to be set to 1.5 I think I'm done with this. Let me tidy things. Let's just check 
quickly check out whether this is working and um i can't tell yeah yeah it's working it's pretty good um we definitely need to style our primary uh, button so that could be the next thing that we do so let's find our component somewhere button and what i'm gonna do is this is kind of like a modifier to the button so we have our main styling of the button and now we're just creating a modifier for it and in fact we can just create it in here so we can do dash dash primary and then inside here inside here we can do background background color and then we can do rgba 255 255 255 of 0.2 then we can do a border of one pixel solid and then we can just bring our variable color of white then we can add a color for the button to be the secondary color as well and last but not least box shadow to give it a little bit of shadow zero pixels three pixels six pixels and then rg g b a zero 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 point sixteen Let's have a look whether this works. Okay, our button is actually working. We could definitely do with, uh, what's it called? With a hover style as well, but let's just save a little bit of time and you know how to do hover. Basically, you can just go in here, do uh, ampersand and then hover, and then you can just change the uh, background color to whatever, you know. Uh, it won't work with the touch thing so let me just so you can do this and just make it look better than this i guess now that we have those global elements they can be reused for all of our sections later which means that the process will be sped up hopefully from now on but we still need to finish this section as is not as uh, as on the design so let's do that super quickly and let's go back to the hero hero okay so we have pretty much everything here maybe we just do another one for the hero wrapper inside the hero hero wrapper which is where is it hero wrapper and we can just style this differently so heading body that's it i think yeah okay that's it so let's do that so i'm gonna wrap everything in the hero wrapper just like that and then let's do ampersand underscore underscore heading and then we can do max with set to 800 pixels for the heading because i want it to be always kind of like in the middle and we can do margin set to zero auto and then for rem auto like so and then we can do font size and we can change the font size just like we've done above but I'm, i want to make it a little bit bigger than this so we can do clamp five rem 10 wv and then 10 rem again so that's going to make it a little bit bigger and then i want to reset the line height to one so let me quickly finish the body as well which is the paragraph text and i want to do something similar i want to give it a max weight of 500 pixels and i want to give it a margin of auto which is top and bottom sorry of zero which is top auto is to the right pre rem is to the bottom to push the button and auto is to the left yeah save this and let's have a look whether this works okay this is pretty sharp i like it and if we scale it down it works really nice the mobile menu Okay, now if I show you the mobile menu, and one thing that I haven't done is probably changing this to a pointer as well for the button. I definitely could do that. Uh, but uh, if I change this, look at this uh, background. It's now blurring everything. It has a lot of contrast and it's working quite well. So that's all working. And to be completely honest, I consider the hero section as done for now. And we forget, we definitely forgot to do the active class for this. And that was gonna be just like uh, maybe underlined. So um, desktop menu. Maybe this. 
desktop menu uh, then we have link and then we just had text decoration and the line is this going to work yeah okay just because obviously there's something better than this but uh it, this just symbolizes that we are on the home page and that's it now we can definitely focus on the next section which shouldn't be too hard to do and this is this section here i'm not gonna i'm just gonna do it like this actually i'm gonna do it with small squares and then it's gonna become big squares and so on just to speed up the process i guess okay let's do the second section here expert coaching nutrition and sports so we're gonna have three cards they're all gonna be links and all of the cards have a little overlay on top and that's pretty much it i think and also one thing that we might want to think about is that those cards here at the bottom are very similar so we might as well kind of like make them customizable so we can reuse the code from here to here as well uh, that would save us a lot of time i think so let's do that i don't know what to call these let's call them categories for now so let's go to index.html and create a new section and i'm just going to call this section well give this section a class name of categories also i want to have a little bit of space between each section so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create myself a few little helpers of paddings and margins so i'm going to do is padding one uh, padding top one and this is something that bootstrap does and i really like so i'm going to do this and also we can link or scroll here where is it the scroll down so i'm going to link it to this section here and when we add a couple of things we'll test the, to see whether the button works and we can also link or where is it or scroll down button which is main uh main and we can link this somewhere around where is it where is here i wonder whether to link around here yeah, main we need to test this but uh you know that we can do I mean, it didn't do anything because we can't scroll, but I think that could work. Anyways, let's uh, focus on the section. So we have categories. Let me create this PT1, which is adding top one helpers. And I'm going to create them somewhere at the top, maybe like around here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, uh, well, I could create a few of them, but I'm just going to keep it simple for now. I'm going to do padding top of one and this could be padding top of i mean it doesn't make any sense now but it could be 8.2 rem um but yeah this one i'm gonna use i think and then let's create one more and i'm gonna do margin top of one as well and this will be margin top of one uh, 8.2 rem so hopefully this will give us a little bit of space now here yeah you can see it and yeah and we can reuse this as well so this is all good let me go inside here just to so you can see a little bit better like so okay inside this section first of all we can name it by giving it a h1 so this could be something like let's give it the class name of sr screen reader only and we can do i'm not sure what to call this one but let's just do a gym no training category training categories i think that would do and then this is not going to be visible to the user and then we need to create a container and then we can maybe give this container a class name of training just so we know what we what we are styling and inside here is where we'll be adding all three cards or links so what i'm going to do is create a link with href and obviously we have nowhere to we have them nowhere to go at the moment so i'm just going to put this sign here and then let's do a class of training 
underscore underscore card and then we might have to come back to this to give it a and these are gonna be they're gonna have a slightly different these are gonna be square and these are gonna be kind of like uh slightly longer so so we can definitely give this one a specific class name so let's do training underscore underscore card and this will be like a modifier so we can do square like that or i'm not so sure what to call it but square is good enough for now so each link is going to have an h3 and then this h3 is going to have a class of training underscore underscore card and then title so our title for the first one is expert coaching and then we have another div which is going to be that overlay that I was talking about kind of like the way we've done the overlay for the hero image so I'm going to call this one just image overlay keep it simple close, open the div close the div of course and then last but not least we have the image so I'm going to wrap the image in a div so let's do dot training and then underscore underscore image oops i'm writing css here and then inside here is where we add the image so let's do image source and then we can do image expert coaching is this one or we can explain what's on the image i'm just gonna put expert coaching for now expert coaching but definitely explain what's in the image this is what all tags are for we can definitely add loading lazy to those images like so and we also uh, we might as well add the width and the height which i don't know so i'm gonna go for what is it, expert coaching it's gonna be huge isn't it 536 559 none of the images have been optimized which is bad but it's obviously just a tutorial here make sure that you optimize your images as much as you can as much as you can scale them down compress them whatever you can do change the format to webp if you like or well serve them as webp if you like you know you know the drill and now that we have this done pretty much we can potentially just copy this hopefully everything is okay and we can paste it a few more times like so and now we can start styling it definitely need to tidy this up a little bit now let's have a look at how we can do this categories training training card okay let me scroll to the bottom copy a comment and this would be this would be categories training to be completely honest we don't really need this but it kind of like explains what this section is about so that's why i'm gonna leave it but it doesn't do pretty much anything i don't think so what i'm gonna do instead is i'm gonna focus on this container here with the class of training and then the cards so let's do that instead training and we can display this as a grid Green makes things styling super easy to do and I will show you how to do that now and between every single grid we want or container the way or link we want a little bit of a gap and I can just do gap of 20 pixels now if we scroll down you will see that all of them are nicely aligned and they should have a little bit of a gap um I can definitely put the put it on the right side okay and now we can start styling the cards so the cards were called unders at underscore underscore card and then i'm thinking of using flex so we can position everything in the middle and work our way up from there so let's do display flex this could be uh, the flex direction needs to be column on this one we need to justify everything uh over justify content to the center align items to the center then we definitely need to make the card to be positioned relative because we're gonna have that black overlay on top of it which will be absolute so 
that's how it's going to work. And then text decoration, because they're links, I don't actually want uh, the underline. So text decoration none. Let's save. As you can see, everything is kind of like moved to the middle. Text decoration is gone. Um, pointer, sorry, it's not a pointer, it's cursor. Cursor needs to be set to pointer. So when we hover over, uh, it looks like a link that you can click on. And one thing that I want to do is set a minimum height for them to be 550 pixels. This is going to be helpful because I want to change the aspect ratio for them to be always one to one. But if I just put aspect ratio one to one, and if I didn't have any height, it, there is a small potential that I could break as aspect ratio is not fully supported on all browsers, but it's getting there and I want to use it. And if I can use it and it doesn't break the layout, I will use it. That's the deal. Let's style the title or shall we move the image first? Let's, let's fix the image first of all, and then we can finish off the title, I think. All right, let's do that. So underscore underscore image, and then let's do position of, I keep doing this, position absolute, and then we can do top of zero, right of zero, bottom of zero, left of zero, and let's have a look. Okay, now they are fitting inside the containers, but, I wonder what I'm going to need overflow hidden, potentially, we'll see. And then I need for the image, I need this to be object fit cover. And then the weight needs to be 100%, height needs to be 100%, and that's looking good. Um, One sec, overflow, it didn't do much, maybe I'm mistaken. Um, that's all good. Now, what we have to do is bring up the title and the body, which is, yeah, bring up the title. And then on the second one, we're going to have body as well. So what we have to do now is bring up the title, which is this one here and we'll modify. Yeah, let's, let's do that now. So inside card, we're going to have and dash title, and this will be font size of free RAM. The Z index is what's important here. We need to change this to two and let's just align text. Align center. Okay. This is pretty cool. If you remember, I added a modifier called card square. So what I'm going to do, yeah, inside the card, we can do that. And I can do ampersand underscore underscore card dash dash square. And that would be my modifier for the, for these cards, because the other ones are going to be slightly different. So what I'm going to do is use aspect ratio. And then I'm going to put one to one. Okay. Uh, one thing that I don't understand is why don't we have a gap between every single element here? Okay. This is a level where that isn't working. And I think. Yeah, the grid isn't showing the train, and this is because we have grid, grid. Okay, okay. See the mistake? Easily done. Um, what I'm going to do is go back and fix it. So we have display instead, and it's grid. And now we should get that gap between each element, and everything is looking good. The last thing that I can think of in here is probably the overlay. Um, we just call this image overlay, I think. So what I'm going to do is just do a class of image overlay and style this as position absolute. This needs to be top zero, right zero, left, no, bottom and left zero. And then we need the Z index to just come up slightly and then we need the background color to be set to RGBA and just make it super opaque, black, one to three, 4.5. Okay. That makes them a little bit uh, darker. And if you want like a hover effect in these, when, when we go to desktop, we can do uh, well, ampersand hover and let me just change the background to 
something else, maybe like just slightly less, whatever, you know. That's working quite nice. And now all we need to do, to be honest, is just change the, uh, the, the cards are now fairly responsive. And all we need to change is the media query and just change the grid. So let me show you how we can do this. Okay, let's add a media query first of all. What I'm going to do is come in here, add media screen and, and min width. And then I'm going to put 600 pixels. And then inside here, I'm going to do grid template columns. And I'm going to do repeat three times one FR like so. And hopefully if we go to back to the browser, you will see that we have three uh, cards here. And if you go down, they kind of scale. I mean, it doesn't look good. I genuinely think that this is because of the height. And what we can do is also for the modifier, which is card square. Uh, what I can do is inside here, I can do ampersand underscore card square and just put aspect ratio one to one. And I think that this here, this minimum height is going to be a problem. So maybe I can do min height, min height of auto. I'm not so sure. I need to try it out. Okay. So hopefully if we resize this, they're all keeping their aspect ratio to a square. And when we go down, they just become like big squares. And that's kind of like what I wanted. I mean, at this point, we could have potentially resized the font as well or make them, yeah, resize the font maybe or do something else with them or have two cards or something like that. But as you can see, this is how you could do the responsive web design, which is pretty cool. So hopefully when we do the next cards, uh, we're pretty much set here and we won't have to do too much work. We might have to just add another class element and that's it. I think, let me just have a look. And I think that we're done with this section and now we have the next section here, which is get started. Why wait? Okay, we just finished this section here, which means that the one below here should be very easy to do. So we might as well just jump over this one and we'll come back to it later. So this should be super quickly to do. So we might as well start it. This is going to be, we can just call this one training options. So let's go back and let's copy a comment from here and let's paste it here. So this would be training options. And this is pretty much going to be using most of the CSS from the training card. So that's why I wanted to do it. And now let's just build some of the HTML. And to do this, we might as well copy most of, let's copy most of the elements from here and we'll just change a couple of things. So I've copied pretty much everything from categories. And now I'm just going to change this from categories to training options. We're going to leave the padding top to be one, which we set early in this tutorial. And I'm going to remove the scroll down because we don't need that. Then H1. And then this is going to be slightly different now. We're going to remove this H1. And in the design, we actually have a heading and a paragraph here, your training options and a little bit of text, which I'm going to copy and paste in a second. So we might as well do that. Also. Another thing that I want to do is wrap everything in a container. Instead of having two containers, I'm going to grab this. So let's remove it and let's just wrap everything in a container like so. And this is going to wrap all of the cards. Okay. We can move this to the left, just tidy things up. Okay. Now we have a container here and inside the container is where I'm going to add my H1 and my paragraph. So to do this, Let's do an H1 and this one will have a class name of training options dash options. And then this will be underscore underscore heading. 
and let's close this and this heading will be your training and then options so your training options and options will be highlighted so we can just do the span that we created earlier well we styled earlier so let's do that and then we need a paragraph so i'm going to do p and this one will have a class name of training options body like so and i'm just going to copy and paste some of the text that we need so copy paste and view or wrap okay this is looking good and then what i want to do for the cards i'm gonna push them a little bit so i'm gonna give them a little bit of padding so padding top one it might not be perfect but uh, you can always mess around with with the margins and paddings of course and also each card here is going to have a paragraph so we definitely might need to have a modifier so what i'm gonna do is we have training which we're reusing from above and then what I'm going to do is add a modifier called training options dash dash options like so. And then we have each card here and each card has this training underscore underscore card class name and this training card square. Now these ones are not going to be square. So I'm going to remove the square class of all of them. And each of these cards will have a paragraph. So we might as well add that. So it's going to be, I'm going to copy and paste some of the text like so and this card is going to have a class of training uh, training card body and it's going to score card body um one thing that i just noticed is that on some elements i've used training options heading and then i've used training card title i was just thinking of you of making them similar but no it doesn't really matter i mean that could be the heading of the section and that's actually the title of the card. I guess it works out. Okay, ignore this. So this one is going to be small group PT. Like so. We have the text, the image. I'm just going to change the image to something else. Let's put nutrition. Like so. The old text needs to be changed, of course. I'm going to just copy whatever I have here. The cut width and height should be the same uh, if I extracted them well. Uh, then I have low delaying on each card. And let me do the same for the rest. So this one is going to be classes. I'm going to copy and paste some text. Let's do that as well. And then maybe X. I'm just going to leave the same image as it doesn't matter too much. And then the last one here, actually, we need the paragraph. So let me copy and paste a paragraph so this one is going to have the same uh, training card body for the paragraph and then we should be and this one needs to have a paragraph as well so what i could do is i'm going to copy this paragraph from the top paste it and just swap the text with something else it doesn't really matter too much let me go ahead and paste it and i can use this paragraph here as well for the last one and the last one will be so this will be one to one like so and i'm going to copy this change the picture here and then this could be the support picture so let's do port.jpg and i've got one to one and maybe just need to change the paragraph so they don't all look the same like so and we should be good to go now if we save this this will probably break so let's go down and have a look as you can see, the title is nowhere to be seen. This needs to be center aligned. This needs to be center aligned. So there are a couple of things that we need to do. So first of all, let's start with the top. So we're going to start with the top, which is training options. And then we're going to target the heading and the body. Let's do that. Let's do dot training options. And inside here, we can do ampersand underscore underscore heading. And then for the heading, we can do text align center and one thing that you might want to do actually is have dot text center uh, class that you can reuse everywhere so potentially i could copy this paste it here and i could use this class name on the heading here like so and that might save me of writing a very specific css for this heading here so technically speaking if i go back we should see that your training options is now center line, which is pretty good. And now 
we can focus on the body, which is ampersand underscore underscore body. Uh, for the body, there are a couple of things I want to do. I want to make sure that the body is in the middle. So I'm going to do max uh, width of 8, 10 pixels. And then I just want to make sure that this body paragraph is in the center. So I'm going to do the margin, 0, top and bottom, and auto on left and right. So it moves to the middle. And we probably need to copy the... Oh, this is text. That needs to be text, by the way. And I'll probably... And I'll probably copy this one here, the text center class name, and paste it in here as well. And let me just refix it here. So text center. And that should now have both of the title and the body text in the center looking good. And now we can focus on the cards and just add this modifier, which was, let me have a look. It was the training options. Okay, now all we have to do is fix the text here which isn't showing i think it's just below and we could potentially use this modifier but now thinking about it it's probably not required um what we're gonna have to do is just go back to the training sorry about that and then what we're gonna have to do is just maybe add ampersand ampersand then body and just do the z index uh, two as well and maybe we'll have to do text align center like so let's have a look at what we get um that's not too bad we do have an issue where we don't have enough padding on the side and ideally i've probably done this on the actual card itself so let's have a look quickly um we could go to the card here and if we give each card a padding of 10 pixels like so maybe that would fix it yeah i think that would do and now the text won't touch the edges which will look a lot more professional and i'm gonna do and obviously that's gonna change for both cards which is a good thing and now we should have top cards working and these cards working as well you could do additional media queries if you think that they're too squished here definitely could do that but it doesn't look too bad on mobile in my opinion and then the only bad position is probably around here. So yeah, maybe one more media query on this and then the desktop is looking pretty nice actually. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And I think this should do the job for now. Okay, the last thing that I just spotted is that the text here is actually in the middle and on the design we have it at the bottom here. So potentially what we have to do on the card is justify the content at the end. And maybe that's why I was thinking of adding the, the training options modifier. So potentially what we can do is get the training options to wrap all of the cards. We can either do, we can either do a unique class for every single card here, or potentially we might be able to use this and modify all the cards. Actually, let me, let me do this training card and maybe training underscore underscore card dash dash end i think that might work i mean i mean let's have a look so i'm gonna put this on every single card and modify it so if we do have training card here and we just need to grab this and do a modifier of end and now justify content and let's have a look whether this is going to work uh, what did it do? I think I put end. Did it go to start or something? Justify content end. Okay. Sorry, it has to be flex end instead. Okay. So let's go back and just do flex and like so and that should look similar to the design now uh, the text is at the bottom potentially you might want to have a little bit more space from the bottom and the top and to do this we can just modify the whole card we can just do maybe like 20 pixels from top and bottom and 10 from left and right and that would fix the issue and they're all looking good now as well and now we can focus on the next one which should be 
this one here. Now we're going to do exactly the same here as well. I'm going to start with this card here, sorry, this section here, and then we're going to do this one as well because they're exactly the same and they can share the same last names, uh, some sort of a component, I guess. So let's go back. And the first section is actually going to be between those two, just like the one we have on the design. And this one is going to be a tiny one, so we might as well get started. So this one is going to be a section, and I'm going to give it a class name of get started. And then what I'm thinking is because we have two sections which will be in almost identical, they're just going to have different backgrounds and different overlays. Uh, this one here has a red overlay and this one just has a dark overlay. So I want to show you how we can use some sort of modifiers for them to share the same CSS, but yet be slightly different. So what we can do for this one, I'm just going to keep it basic and let's say get, get started. And this could be something like image one or whatever you wish. And then let's give it a pattern, sorry, margin top of one just so we have a little bit of space between the sections like so. And that's it. Now inside this section, we're going to have an overlay. So let's do a div of class overlay. And let's close the div. We can move this one at the top. And then we're going to wrap everything in a container like so. And inside here, we're going to have a title. So h1, this is going to be get started today. And then on another line, why wait? I'm going to use BR for this one here to move the text on another line. And then we're just going to do a span of Y weight to make the Y weight white. And then the next section that we have is going to be, sorry, the next bit that we have is going to be a button. So we're going to do href here. And then this is going to be a class name of button. And then I'm going to use the primary button. So button dash dash primary. And this is going to be sign up like so. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anything. This could definitely use the class center that I created earlier. So let's do text center like so. And I think that we should be good to go with this section. Let's save it. Let's have a look at what we have. Here it is. So we have get started today. Why wait? All looking good. The button is here on the left side. So we definitely need to align this. And of course, at the image and the few overlays. Now for this section here, we're going to have three overlays. This one here, which is a gradient from black to this dark red, and then a little bit of opacity. Then we're going to have this overlay here, which is just a gradient. And we're going to have another one at the bottom. So let's have a look at how we can do that. And I'm going to do this one slightly different, by the way. I'm going to use this image here as a background image instead, just so I can show you uh, how you can do it in a different way, because we've done this one here as an actual image. And that's why we're going to do this one with CSS. So you have two, two different examples. That's all. Okay. Let's go back and let's copy a comment from somewhere. So this one here will do. And I need to move this to the top, by the way, the text center because it's kind of like a global style that I'm going to be reusing everywhere. So this one is going to be get started. Let's do it. Let's start it and we can start styling it. So get started. And then inside here, I'm going to start with doing some global stuff. And then we're going to use the modifier to add the image. So let me show you. So first of all, I'm going to set the background attachment to be fixed, which means that every time we scroll, we're going to have like a kind of a parallax effect a little bit. Uh, the image is just going to be fixed, which looks pretty cool. And then we're going to have the background dash uh, position. And this is going to be centered like so. Then, then we're going to have a background repeat. And this is going to be set to no repeat because I don't want the background to be repeating. And then we need background size to be cover. So I want the image to always cover the section, no matter how big it is, it's just going to look cool. And then I want to set a minimum height for this section to be 700 pixels, uh, pixels like so. And then 
course we're gonna align the items to the center with the button and everything and then and then what i'm gonna do here is sorry this needs to be displayed fix obviously if i'm gonna align items so let's do display sorry flex if you want to use the align items you need to have it as display flex or grid i guess and then the last thing that i need to do here is position this as relative because all of the overlays will be positioned absolute to this relative div or section. Let me make some space here and let's start with getting the first image and then we're going to put all of the overlays on top after. So for the first image, I'm going to use this here, get started IMG1. And I'm, I'm actually going to do this after get started. So like here. So mission now is to grab an image and what we can do is background image like so url and then in double quotes we can do dot dot and images and then i need the get started image like so and then we can do all of the overlays let me show you what we have so far so we have the image as you can see we have this nice kind of like a parallax effect i guess this definitely needs to be aligned to the center but uh, other than that it's looking pretty good so let's continue now and do some of the overlays and actually, let me just quickly do that. Let me click quickly center everything. So what I can do is use the container inside and I'm just going to do text align center. Hopefully that will do it and just put Z index as one because we're going to have a lot of overlays. And as you can see that went to the center, I could have potentially give it the text center class name and that would have probably worked as well. And now let's do the overlays. So for the overlays, I'm going to use the before and after pseudo elements. So I'm going to do ampersand, two semicolons, and then let's use before to start with. Inside here, we need to give it a content of empty, just so it creates that empty difference on the page. And then we can position this as absolute to this relative section. And now we can do top zero, right zero, bottom okay no no we don't need bottom on this one sorry and left zero so this this one is going to be the top the top one here this one here so i want it to be positioned at the top of the page sorry at the top of this section here from the left to the right and we'll probably give it a little bit of a height so this one i want to achieve that's why i didn't put bottom so let's go back and that's left zero. And then what we can do is give it a height of 140 pixels maybe. And then let's give it a default background of black. That would be hashtag with the three zeros. And then let's do a background. And this is going to be a linear gradient, kind of like flip this one around 180 degrees. And then I'm gonna do RGBA, RGBA. And then this is going to be zero 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 one and then we're gonna have ten percent rgba and then zero 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 and then zero and now we're gonna have hundred percent right hopefully this will work and the last thing that i want to do just in case i'm gonna put the width to be hundred percent hopefully if you go back you should see that we're getting this nice gradient here which is pretty awesome now i just need to rotate the gradient which should be fairly easy to do and just add another one here at the bottom so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this before element here paste it and i'm just gonna do an after one after like so we have everything should stay the same except the degrees here i'm gonna put around so this is zero degrees and yeah i think that should be it and oh one more thing now we need to change the top to be bottom and that's it so if we save this let's go back and have a look yep that's all looking good and the last thing that i want to do is uh, add another overlay which was that black to red overlay so it helps us out with the contrast of the text so let's do that if we go back we can do an overlay here and i'm actually going to make this one as a global overlay thing let me show you overlay we can put here as positioned absolute and then what i'm going to do is top zero right zero um bottom zero 
left zero and then opacity i'm gonna set to 0 0.6 but because we have a specific overlay on both sections the one here and the one here we're gonna have different colors so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use this modifier here to add a special overlay so this one is going to be dot overlay like so and i'm just gonna do background background and then this is going to be linear gradient and i'm gonna do uh let's go with hashtag three zeros for black starting from zero percent and then i'm gonna put a very like bloody dark red color i guess four b one two three four and then that'll be hundred percent like so save this and let's go back to the page and see what we get as you can see we are getting the nice overlay and if i scale down the website now hopefully everything is uh, working well as you can see it's all working well on mobile you might want to make this section maybe smaller but that's just a personal preference i guess and i quite like the way th the way this is working out it's pretty nice so the beautiful thing about the next section here this one here is that we can literally copy everything everything we've, we've done from above just change the modifier and obviously the content so let's do that that would be super easy to do and we're going to paste it after the training option so let me have a look let's go back i'm going to copy this section study this thing up i mean format everything and now underneath section we're going to create a new one and what i'm going to do is get started image two and let's just change some of the text so in the h1 here let's just remove all of this and let me do it like this so in fact i'm just going to copy and paste some of the text we have we will help you in then br the shape of your life we will help you to get in the shape of your life then br and then let's get started and this is going to be wrapped in a span so span like so just to make this text white copy paste and like that the sign up button is going to be exactly the same so we just need to recreate this here let me copy it and after the get started image one we're gonna have the get started image two and i can literally copy all of this here paste it and i'm just going to change the image super quickly so this is going to be we will we will rock you help like so and the background now needs to be changed as well so this one is going to be rgba and oops definitely don't want that and this would be zero 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 point five which is a very opaque color save it and hopefully if we go back to the website you should see that we just done this section super quickly and and as we scroll we're getting exactly the same effect as this one here and we're done we're done with this section so let's have a look at what's next okay so we have the footer here which is the last section and i'm going to speed up the process on this one and do it super quickly but again i want to show you how you can do it so let's get started and let's have a look at how we can do the footer. So for the footer, we're gonna go outside the main uh, the main section here, and I'm gonna do it with the footer tag. So let's do footer like so. And of course, I'm gonna give this footer a class name of footer. So what I'm gonna do is inside here, let's do class footer and let's give it a padding top of one. And then inside the footer, everything is going to be wrapped in a container, like so. And on this container, we, we might as well give it another class of footer container, like so, which is going to make things a lot easier if we convert this into a grid. So we're going to have a couple of things. So I want a couple of columns, essentially. So let's do footer dash cop, like so. And each column is going to have a heading. So heading three maybe on this one. And this one is going to have a class name of footer dash co. I'm basically reusing the name from here and doing underscore underscore heading or title, whatever you wish to call it. 
and this one is going to be find us then this is going to be a list so we can do an order list of with the class name of footer call and then underscore underscore list like so and this list is going to have a couple of items so maybe we can add an address address won't be linked here but we're going to link it now so href and i'm going to link potentially you have link to google maps or something like that and then we can have 43 moscow by london which i kind of made up and this is all looking good now i can duplicate this one by doing all shift and down and then we can change this one to something like contact uh this could be a tail link so tail and we just put something like uh, some random numbers and then this could be our phone number here like so that's all looking good and now we can essentially copy this and just reuse it for a couple of more columns so let me copy this column paste it in here and i'm gonna change some of the information so let's do get assistance and then we can just put a bunch of links so i'm gonna remove this one and i'm going to remove this as well and uh, this is going to be and uh, let's just do a link of i mean yeah might as well just put a link it doesn't matter too much and now let's just duplicate this a couple of times like so and let's create two more columns so i'm going to copy this one here paste it and then this one is going to be company like so i'm going to leave everything inside exactly the same and then let's just do one more of keep in touch in touch like so and at the bottom i'm going to create another container so dot container and this is going to be text aligned center and then uh, let's just do it as a footer underscore underscore copyright as you can guess this is where all of the copyright information is going to go so i'm going to do a paragraph with the class name of pt1 just to like push everything a little bit so we have a little bit more space and i'm gonna do um copy and then let me just copy some text so we're gonna actually don't, let me just write some text 2021 zoo 365 and then we have created by um, in the link a href i can do i can add my uh, website maybe so https ready.co.uk and inside here actually this could be a target of blank so it opens in another tab and this is going to be called ready like so if we save this let's have a look at what we get we have three columns they will need to be reset of course we have the copyright here at the bottom and we can just start styling this so let's start obviously we're going to start from mobile so i can move this to the left side so let's go at the top here and see what we get so for the container for the call okay let's copy a comment like always and paste it here at the bottom so this is going to be footer like so um we can start styling it. so with the class name footer i'm gonna do the copyright first of all let's do copyright and then this is going to be margin bottom 20. something like this this should give us a little bit of space at the bottom and now we can use the footer container here for all of the columns so let's do that in fact i can even put it outside here so they're not nested if you don't want to but you can definitely nest them i don't think it's a problem so let's do that and we can display this as a grid grid is going to help us so much with uh, being able to put stuff into columns and rows and then i can do gap of 10 between each grid as you can see that moved a little bit now now what i'm gonna do straight away from here i can do the responsiveness for each grid so inside the footer container we might as well add two media queries so media screen and then and and this is going to be minimum width of 600 pixels and inside here we can literally do grid 
template columns, and I can do three columns uh, to be sorry, repeat three columns, one fraction each. That should deal with the first media query, and I'm going to copy this one more time, paste it, and this is going to be roughly around 800 pixels, and I want to change this to four. So if I was to open this and scroll down, you will see that our columns are now stacking up nicely. And as we go down, they kind of go to three and then they will stack up. So that's not too bad. We're pretty much done with the responsiveness. And now I can just focus on the actual footer column. And what I can do is under here, maybe we can just do footer dash co. And let's have a look at what we need. So for the headings, heading, sorry. I'm going to put the size to font size to 1.8 rem, like so. So there you go. They went a little bit smaller than original. And then let's do the list now. So we can do underscore underscore list. And there are a couple of things that we need to do. We need to reset the padding and margin to zero. And as you can see, everything went to the left here. So we don't have any margin and padding. And we need to remove any bullet points just in case. So list style type to none. And they will be removed now. Uh, you probably didn't see them here on the left, but they're removed now. And then inside each list, we have a list. Sorry, in, inside the unordered list, we have a list. So what I'm going to do is just push everything to the bottom a little bit by using margin at bottom. And that could be like I don't know, six pixels. I'm not going to measure it now, but that should give us a little bit of space between every single item. And then for every single link, I'm going to do padding and then eight pixels and then zero. So now, Actually, one more thing for the links. If you want the links to be uh, clickable from the left to the right, we, it will make it easier to click the links. All you have to do is convert the links to display block. And now, if I hover over my mouse, you will see that they're all links. Of course, we can do all sorts of like uh, what they call uh, hovers and so on. But I think that this will work quite well. And that's it pretty much. Obviously, if you put real information, it's going to look so much better. Uh, but uh, that's how you do everything and stack everything. As you can see, everything is working. I don't know whether I want everything to be uh, underlined like this, but of course, you can just remove the underline from the link and so on. And that's pretty much everything from this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If I do, if I go on the website and press tab and press enter, as you can see, it goes to make this year your year. So we're kind of like skipping the whole navigation, which is a good thing. Then if I click on the scroll, it goes to this. Well, technically, if I'm at the top here and I click on the scroll, you will see that it goes to this section here. I could have uh, changed the images, but um, yeah, it doesn't matter too much. But uh, if we go down, you will see the text here. And yeah, everything is pretty nice so far. Not so bad. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you've learned something. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a comment below. Like this video and consider subscribing for more tutorials like this. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. As always, my name is Ruddy. And you're watching my channel, Ruddy the Brand.